It's over. No longer will we ever see Blake Griffin suit up in a Detroit Pistons uniform again. It's quite a sad day because obviously he gave everything. I know at this point in time, he hasn't been playing well. He's had a terrible season. Let's keep it straightforward and let's keep it honest. He's had a bad, bad season. But what he did two years ago, do we remember the team that the Pistons had? Reggie Jackson starting, Reggie Bullock was there for half the season, Wayne Ellington came in, Luke Kennard was in his second season and was still quite timid, Andre Drummond, we know what Andre Drummond is, he's Andre Drummond, Thon Maker was getting like 20 minutes a night off the bench, Zaza Pachulia and Jose Calderon were getting like 15 minutes a game, no wonder Blake's never recovered, how can you recover mentally or physically from having to play with that bunch of players? Like, no disrespect to those players. Well, kind of disrespect to those players because Jose Calderon, Thon Maker, Glenn Robinson III, Reggie Bullock. It was rough. It was rough. The only thing that was not rough, the only reason we all watched those games was because of Blake Griffin because there's no doubt that team is winning five games, <laughs> 10 games without Blake. They probably would have won 10 to 12 games. That's the trust the process 76 is without Blake Griffin. And that's what he did for the team and the franchise. You can't question the work ethic, what he put in and how committed he was. We all remember against the Milwaukee Bucks when Blake Griffin came in and delivered. He was on one leg. I remember his post defense on Giannis. Giannis was having his way with the Pistons. He couldn't get past Blake. Blake really locked up on defense. He was the only one creating offense aside from Luke Kennard. Reggie Jackson was actually decent in that series. We don't need to go into depth. On that series, as my light goes out, obviously that's out of battery, we'll ignore that. But in the Milwaukee Bucks series, on one leg, he was actually pretty good. <laughs> like, watch some of those highlights of the game he played, or was it two games? I can't remember. But it was a fantastic effort to be on one leg, and hopefully that wasn't what set him back. I don't think you can pinpoint that one thing and say, that's the reason Blake is where he is today, because obviously beforehand, well, he had had so many injuries, and I was one who thought he might be able to come back again, because we saw how he aged before. It was like, if he could come back from injuries before, why can't he come back from it again? I'm not going to give up on Blake, but it's going to be hard to make a trade for him, and that's what we're here to talk about. It's good to reminisce on the memories of the greatest Piston in quite some time, in at least 10 to 15 years, but... It's over now, so we have to talk about some trades and some potential suitors. It is not going to be easy. I can tell you that. It is not going to be easy to find a trade partner. Maybe a buyout, but you're going to have to ask Blake to say, look, mate, you're going to have to drop $20 million off at the tax office. Just drop $20 million off in an offshore bank account because we're going to have to slash your wages. The only way they can buy him out is if he takes a massive pay cut because they're not buying out someone on a $36 million contract. Particularly the Pistons of all teams, no, they don't have that kind of bread. They, 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 don't, they don't have that kind of bread. And it would be a huge cap hit. It's not something you want to do, buying out someone for $36 million. That seems a little bit unreasonable. Can we conjure something up? Troy Weaver gives us hope. He's known for quite some time. I'm sure they've known since the start of the season, if Blake wasn't going to perform and he hasn't performed. Actually, I remember back before the start of the season, they tried to trade him for John Wall. That should have been a hint at what Blake was probably doing in practice because I thought at the time, that doesn't seem like the smartest trade. I know it's dumb saying that now, but I'm going to be honest. At the time, I was like, John Wall for Blake Griffin? It's panned out that that would have been a fantastic trade if we had managed to pull that off. We haven't. So we're going to have to look outside the box and it's going to have to be with some expiring contracts. Some of the worst contracts in the league. Whatever contracts you can get your hands on is what the Pistons are going to have to work with to try and offload Blake Griffin. Before I explore the trades, I know it's like halfway into the video at this point in time, but if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. It really does help out how the video goes. It's free and it would just be much appreciated. So I would really appreciate that. But let's talk about this. Let's also talk about how Big Deke Bay, he's the reason Blake's getting traded. Isn't it kind of crazy how Blake Griffin comes into preseason and talks about how Sadiq Bay is the most complete rookie he's ever seen. And Sadiq Bay is the reason Blake is getting traded. Now, I'm sure Blake wants to move on. I'm sure he wants to go to a contender. But this has definitely fast forwarded the process because they realized that they can't go any longer without Sadiq Bay seeing 25 to 30 minutes a night minimum because he's that good. And then Sekou Dumboya, you want to get him minutes as well. And if you're giving Sadiq 20 minutes and Blake 25 minutes, well, that makes no room for Seku, doesn't it? Let's talk about the trade. Here's one that I got on Twitter. Someone suggested the Pistons get Kelly Olynyk, Gary Harris, and Mo Harkless. The Miami Heat get PJ Dozier and Blake Griffin. And the Denver Nuggets get Andre Iguodala and Wayne Ellington. That's actually pretty good. That is a pretty good trade. 
I see that as a pretty good win-win for each team. Detroit get Kelly Olynyk and Mo Harkless, two expiring contracts that aren't exactly great. The Miami Heat is struggling at the moment. They're struggling. They just lost recently to a Clippers team without four of their best players. So that's a struggle. Maybe the Heat are going to pull the trigger and this is exactly the kind of move that would be kind of crazy to make. But with those kind of expiring contracts, you could see it happening. From the Denver Nuggets perspective, we need to talk about every perspective in each trade. I hate when people just go out and say, oh, let's trade Blake Griffin for LeBron James. Um, the Pistons win that trade. Yeah, they do. But no one's going to do that trade. So we have to talk about a reasonable trade that could suit all parties. And the Denver Nuggets, what do they get? They get Andre Iguodala. They need wing defense. That is exactly what they need. They get Wayne Ellington, another shooter, a shooting guard. Gary Harris is currently injured. He struggled with injuries and he's not a great contract. He's not the best player at the moment. Would they want to give up Gary Harris? That's the only thing. It's questionable because Andre Iguodala as well, he's coming towards the end of his career. You have to consider as well something that I'm just thinking about now. Andre Iguodala and the Denver Nuggets obviously have a bit of bad blood from back in the day. Does he want to go back to Denver? Do they want him back? But if you just look at it from a personnel perspective, the Heat get PJ Dozier and Blake Griffin. They get another body. PJ Dozier is a very solid role player. Blake Griffin, could he be a difference maker on the Heat? I'm not giving up on him because he has played a couple of good games. This season, he has played a few good games. It's been a few, but he has played a few good games, which suggests to me, maybe in the right circumstances, if he's only playing every second game, if he just needs to get up for the playoffs, if he gets a new change of scenery, all of these ifs and buts, maybe he turns into a better player. And maybe that's the chance Miami take on him because, well, currently they're really Really struggling. That's not the worst trade. I quite like that trade for all parties involved. And then there's the Dallas Mavericks, another team that have been struggling. They've kind of turned a corner, but you've got some contracts on the Mavericks that could make it work. James Johnson, you have to look for the worst contracts. He's currently one of the worst contracts in the league at like $19 million a year. He's got a ridiculous contract for what he's doing. The Mavericks might want to make a move. The defense would suggest no, but we're just throwing everything at the table. We've got to discuss every kind of option. And the Dallas Mavericks, James Johnson, Tim Hardaway Jr., I know the Mavericks fans would be saying to me, we don't want to give up Tim Hardaway Jr. for Blake Griffin. I know you probably don't, but we got to explore the trades. Wayne Ellington going the other way, Blake Griffin, something along those lines. I dread a front court with Blake Griffin and Kristaps Porzingis in terms of defense. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who knows? That's, that's another potential option. One other one that came to mind was obviously the Portland Trailblazers. They've been rumored with him before. Zach Collins is currently out for the season. The only issue with the Trailblazers is they're playing too well. They're winning games without their best players. So you think to them, they get CJ McCollum, they get Yusuf Nurkic back. They think of themselves as probably championship contenders, the way they're playing. Does that mean we think of them as that? No, probably not. But that's what they're thinking of themselves. So you have to keep that in mind when talking about a trade, which suggests to me, that could be a very hard deal to make work. That came to mind because they've had some injury problems. Zach Collins is going to be out for the rest of the season. And maybe they go all in on a trade like Blake Griffin. They've always talked about a third star. Everyone's talked about a third star in Portland. Maybe this is the one, even though he doesn't look like a star now. But maybe they can convince themselves that he can turn a corner. Those are the trades. Probably all pretty unlikely. Like I said, the Nuggets one, I quite like, where the Heat take a chance on Griffin. They're not really getting rid of anyone. They're just getting rid of expiring contracts who aren't playing many valuable minutes. The Nuggets get in a wing defender that they need and a shooter. That's probably the best one I've seen so far. People have talked about the Boston Celtics and Campbell Walker. <laughs> well, that would be something. That would be something. It's unlikely, but we're throwing everything at the wall. As I've mentioned, these trades are not all going to be likely. Keep that in mind. Drop below some comments of trades you think could happen. I'm always interested in hearing more ideas. And then obviously there is the buyout option, which is unlikely as well. Like I mentioned, you're going to have to leave a lot on the table, Blake, if you want to get bought out, if you want to go to a contender, a championship contender. Maybe he does that. Maybe he's got enough money and he says, screw it. I'm out of here. I want to go to LA. I want to play for the Lakers. Something ridiculous like that. That's not going to happen, but you get the point. And to the last one, the last option that I forgot to mention, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Blake's from Oklahoma. Maybe the Thunder can convince themselves if the Pistons give them a pick or two picks. The other way, the Thunder send back Al Horford, who doesn't have the best contract, although he's playing better than most people would have expected. He's having a pretty good season. Maybe they can do that. Troy Weaver, we've got faith in you, Troy. Please make it work and don't sacrifice all of our young players or future picks. As long as that happens, I'll be happy. I don't care who we get back. I couldn't care less if it's Kelly Olynyk, Mo Harkless, and a bunch of scrubs. Like, honestly, it does not matter at this point in time. Give up Wayne Ellington. 
Delon Wright has been fantastic, but if he has to go, he has to go. A potential trade for Blake Griffin, who will no longer play for the Detroit Pistons. This might be one of the last times we talk about Blake Griffin on this channel, because who knows where he's going to be? Who knows if he's ever going to get back to his best? Maybe he's going to peter out and turn into a role player at best. That would be sad to see. I hope he can turn it around. We've seen some glimpses of the Blake that we used to know and love, but it's just been glimpses. It's been very far and few between, and that is the issue because the Pistons are trying to convince these people that it's not glimpses. He's fine. He's just in a bad situation. So that's all I've got to say. Those are my trades for Blake Griffin. Potential buyout potential options that could happen. Look, let me know below, as I said, if you've got any other trade options. I, I don't know what to say. Blake Griffin, salute for your services. Your time in Detroit is over. Big Deke Bay is stepping up. Seiko is going to turn things around. Killian Hayes, once he gets back on the floor, Isaiah Stewart, trust me, Detroit is turning a corner and we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. The end of Blake Griffin's era in Detroit is over and it's fitting that it happened after we beat Stan Van Gundy and the Pelicans.